I don't think so. I live in Manchester. I live in Newcastle. It is this. Uh huh. Let us leave it as arguably. As a matter of fact, you need neighbors so you can mingle and probably. Okay, leave that on the side. So fam, how is everything? Hope you are doing very well. Today, about cost of living, we will be talking about Newcastle. This will be some form of a guide for anybody who's moving to Newcastle, either as a single person, as a student, or a family person with kids or without kids. So, we'll be talking about the cost of living in Newcastle. We'll be comparing the cost of living in Newcastle with other major cities. We also will be covering the most expensive places to live as well as the cheapest places to live. We're talking about things to do for free in Newcastle. I am hoping we cover all of this because <laughs> it's seeming to be a whole lot. And we will definitely be talking about job opportunities because what well, we need the money to balance the cost of living. Every other thing in between, let's get started. We will also be talking about universities, colleges, institution in terms of education there in Newcastle as well. So let me grab my computer so we run through this real quick. Now on a general note, if you're wondering if it is worth it moving to Newcastle, let me tell you some of the things you should consider. It could be a good idea because they have amazing schools there. Primary school, secondary school, university, and colleges. When it comes to properties, oh my goodness, Newcastle is amazing because they have new buildings. Because Newcastle went through regeneration, right? So they've been able to take down dilapidated buildings. I freak out when I see certain dilapidated buildings here in this UK. They, they are good with holding on to dilapidated, build, dilapidated buildings. And I know some of their people might say, oh, it's their culture, it's their heritage. But hey, this is 2022. Going on 2023, we need to move. <laughs> so Newcastle does have amazing, nice structure. They do have great infrastructure. I'm talking good road network, good rail network, sea network, air network, transportation, top notch. Beautiful scenery, amazing, lovely places with so many wonderful free things to do. Recreational centers and recreational activities you can run without spending a dime as well as a very beautiful cultural heritage there and it is quite affordable to live in Newcastle. Let's go deeper. Okay, in terms of safety, uh, according to a survey called Unbroken Britain, ranked Newcastle as the third safest city to live in the UK. And now, given that it could be controversial, because in the comment section, some people could be like, mm, I don't think so. I live in Manchester. I live in Newcastle. It is this. Uh -huh. Let us leave it as arguably, arguably the third safest place to stay in the UK. So let us talk about renting. Renting in Newcastle on an average one bedroom in Newcastle cost about 500 pounds two bedroom about 700 pounds a three bedroom You're moving down towards 900 pounds and for a four bedroom there You definitely should have from a thousand pounds at least 1,000 pounds on an average and this estimate is according to home.co.uk Now let's quickly compare the cost of living in Newcastle versus other major cities so, Newcastle here yeah, is 39% and I'm not surprised, cheaper than living in London. Newcastle is 6% cheaper than Birmingham. Newcastle is 5% cheaper than Leeds. Newcastle is about the same with living in Liverpool in terms of cost of living. Newcastle is about 7% cheaper than living in York. York. The cost of living in Newcastle is just about the same with Leicester. Um, Newcastle is cheaper than Glasgow and it is 10% cheaper than living in Edinburgh, that's in Scotland, it is 13% cheaper than Bristol. The cost of living in Newcastle is said to be at about the same with Plymouth. Would you like to know some of the best places according to popular votes to live in Newcastle? I want to know myself. So, Keyside is said to be one of the best places and I'll tell you why. Fenham, Gosforth, Jessmond, Sandiford, Heaton. Now, these places I've mentioned have been chosen because of their proximity to the city centre, to transportation links, I'm talking road transportation, the air transportation, the sea transportation, and the rail transportation. These areas have been highlighted as well for their affordability, 
and the fact that they are also very family friendly so if you're coming with your children they have good schools in these areas and for higher level students sandyford for example have properties in the sandyford that have been converted to be student let or student renting friendly so for everybody these areas i mentioned has something good for you now let's quickly look at the cheapest places to live in Newcastle. I, I like it when I hear that something is affordable. <laughs> so the top three cheapest places to live in Newcastle are Chopwell, 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 okay, Western Chop Hill Wood, South Shields Town Centre, Deans, High Shields, Fenham, Westgate, Wing Grove. You need to know the most expensive area in case you need to avoid them. Let's go. So, three most expensive places to live in Newcastle. There is Dilston, Dipton Wood. There is Goldsforth. Even though Goldsforth was mentioned among some of the nice places to stay, primarily because of the perks of living in it, it isn't cheap to live in. And then the third most expensive place is Pontland. Ponte land. You see the spelling there. Yeah, that's because renting there or looking to buy a property there doesn't come cheap. Now, the best advice for one who's looking to move to Newcastle, probably as a single working class professional, is to try to get a room probably in a shared apartment or a studio flat. You just want to start small, yeah, and see how it works. You do not want to invest all of your income into renting. You want to start you know it's a manageable finance financial burden so if you look at sites like spare room gum tree nestpeak.com you can easily find you know portable apartment portable room in a shared flat where you can just start up and given that you're a single person you really do not need much space as a matter of fact you need neighbors so you can mingle and probably okay leave that on the side so you can maybe go here yeah, and have people to have conversation with when you return from work you can also like to join some social gathering or social club go to pubs hang out meet with people i mean you're single live your best life now if you're looking to move to newcastle as a student let me tell you newcastle has over fifty thousand students like only students there in newcastle they have beautiful sports centers pubs clubs recreational centers things that can make you unwind can help you unwind things that can make you forget a little bit about home i'm just joking like what i mean is not feel so homesick things that can help you settle in well into the area and feel you know welcomed <laughs> now let me quickly tell you some very three 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 very affordable places which is also good good in the sense that you can easily commute to university you can commute to everything you need like it's not obscure right it's not interior it's very centered and very affordable as well by affordable i mean you can pay as low as 60 pounds a week to rent a room there three places heating in heating, for example, you can pay, you can get rent as low as sixty pounds a week. Jessmond and Sandyford. These places are amazing, amazing parks, amazing restaurants. Very, very student, single person friendly. Have we talked about the institutions in Newcastle? Yes, we haven't. I tell you now. There is Newcastle University. There is Northumbria University. There is Newcastle College, and there is. Newcastle Sixth Form College. Now, for my family people, if you are looking to move to Newcastle as a family person, not to worry because they have amazing parks for families. They have good, very good schools, both primary and secondary, so your children are covered and the area is generally safe and family friendly. Speaking of primary and secondary school, there are very good primary and secondary schools there in Newcastle. Let me just mention a few. So there is Our Lady and St. Anne's Primary School. There is Kingston Park. There is Wingrove Park Primary School. Throckley Primary School. St. Charles Primary School. Then if you have children in secondary school, they are likely to attend Gosford Academy. There is Sacred Heart Catholic High School. There is St. Mary's Catholic School. There is St. Cuthbert High School. There is Heaton Manor School. When you talk about employment opportunities, whether you're a student, a single person, a family person, 
whoever it is you are, Newcastle has good employment for you because what? They know you've got bills to pay, right? And they do not want you to move over there and be stranded. So everything you need to settle in well is already in place in terms of employment opportunity. And the average salary there in Newcastle is about £26,000 according to payscale.com. So some of the top employers of labour there in Newcastle are the University of Newcastle, Newcastle Building Society, Sage Group, that's a big company, Greg's PLC, there is Nestle Foods, Nestle is worldwide, there is NHS, NHS is all over the UK, Virgin Money PLC, and there is Deloitte. And if you want to easily catch up on, you know, job opportunities there in, in Newcastle, go to websites like Total Jobs, go to Indeed, go to jobsite.co.uk as well. You will see lots of openings in all of these industries and employers I have mentioned. So when it comes to commute around Newcastle, they have the train lines. They have good road networks. I'm talking the bus, the metro. If you have your private car, the system is working well. So when it comes to recreational activities, like things you can do for free, have fun without spending money, there's great streets for some sightseeing, beautiful architecture. There is Newcastle Quayside. There is Jesmond Dean Park. They also have the Literary and Philosophical Society. Over there, they have amazing historic and modern books. They have one of the largest music collection in the whole of North England. It's a beautiful recreational place to be. I hope you do find this video some sort helpful. I hope it you know, gave you some sort of insight in case you're looking to move to Newcastle anytime soon. If you already live in Newcastle, hey, it would be a good idea to say hello in the comment section and tell us more things we might need to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.